In this video, I'll be talking about a method and a tool that is really effective and actually it's very important that you use it on your project of any type. From ADHD perspective, I will be giving an example, a practical example about this method and tool for you as an architect or an engineer can use it for any kind of activity, process, or even you can evaluate a whole project using it on a whole project at the initiation phases of this project. Actually, before the initiation phases for this project, at the feasibility study times. You, as an architect or an engineer, can use it to help you take better decisions, inform efficient decisions for you to take for any kind of processes, activities, or even you could use it on an entire project. While it is usually used at the very early stages of a project, even before the initiation of the project, during the feasibility study times, but still this method and tool can be used at any stage of the project life cycle. Especially if you're an ADHD architect or an ADHD engineer, while you could be having lots of alternatives in your mind at play and lots of options, this tool will help you organize these alternatives and these ideas and would inform more efficient, better decisions for this process activity or an entire project. It is the cost-benefit analysis method and tool. While in many times, this tool is associated with the alternatives analysis and I made an entire video about this method and tool. So this cost-benefit analysis can be used together with alternatives analysis method and tool and they together integrate each others. The cost-benefits analysis is focused more on the cost perspective. While the alternatives analysis in this context, in this case, would be focused more on the technical and process perspective. However, as I said, the cost-benefit analysis could be used independently by itself for an entire project, process, or activity. The cost-benefit analysis method and tool can help you decide which subcontractor to settle with and sign an agreement with. It could help you what source you should be outsourcing your materials or services from, you should be supplying from. Whether having a design project or a construction project, a landscaping, a planning project, whatever the case is, this tool will inform better decisions and will tell you whether you go with an option or not, or choose the other alternative option. You can study, analyze, and decide over a whole stream whether to follow it or not over a type of material, over a kind of service, whether you do it or not, or do other options, as I said. So in short, it's about the cost effectiveness of a process, an activity, an option to decide, or an entire project. It determines the benefits provided by a project or any item of it against its costs. If you don't use this method or tool already, you would enjoy mastering this tool, especially if you're an ADHD architect or an ADHD engineer. Ultimately, this tool will help you to organize your data, to systemize your options, their efficiency, and to inform you much more efficient decisions and to guide your way to increase the performance and efficiency of your work or your project. Both, actually. Now, let's hop into the practical example. Starting with this example. So this example is about projects. So let's say you're an investor and you are confused of which project you should invest in to start, to implement, and to make your revenue from. We have project one, two, three, a mock-up example, by the way. You could be writing in the description of the projects here at these slots. And then the cost, of course, this is the cost of the project. So everything you spent so far on a project from start, from initiation till closure and until the project is completely finished and starting to function, to operate. Then the earnings, okay? So how much would this project get to you? So these numbers, actually, you can get them in coordination, in working together with a financial analyst or your stakeholders, the, the other partners, the other shareholders, whatever the case is. These numbers, you could be getting them from a separate kind of study and tools. You could get them from feasible studies. You could be doing it on yourself, on your own, if the project isn't that complex, isn't that large of a scale. These earnings in this example are the net profit uh, earnings. That means you have already deducted 
all the overheads, wages, salaries, the financial responsibilities, the raw materials, expenditures, and all of that. Let's say, let's write in here, the net profit earnings, all right? This is a very simplified example. So the cost-benefit ratio is very straightforward. You could get it very easily just by doing this simple formula. You will be dividing the earnings on the costs, the cost again that made the projects happen. So in this example, we can see that project three has the best cost benefit ratio. Why? Because the ratio between its initial cost, its implementation costs, operational costs, and its revenue, the revenue that you could produce out of it, the net profit, is the best among the other projects. But this example is very simplified, very straightforward, just to get you a high level view of the cost benefit analysis. Jumping to the next example. Now this example has the time factor into it. That means it's more realistic. So let's dive into it. You, you can see the tabulation is of the same structure as the simple one. But here, of course, it's a mock-up as well. I'll be giving here some description to each project. Project three, let's see, snacks, stalls. I don't know, children play, ground, and maybe common area and one balls room for children. I know you like balls room. <laughs> As for project one, let's go for project one. Project one cafe. And let's say restaurant for light meals, probably. What else? What can we get? like uh, outdoor sitting area, indoor and outdoor sitting areas. All right. And for project two, I could go with 10 billiard tables, bar, and I don't know, snacks restaurant. Restaurant. Two poker rooms. Mm. This project looks more costly than the others. Given the prices that I assumed previously, anyhow. So project one costs will cost us 290,000 to design it, plan it, implement it and operate it. So from start to finish. And then this is the cost of project two, which is 435,000 and project three would be 237,000. And then we have here the earnings. So the earnings per month. So let's say you did your own feasibility study you worked it together with a financial analyst or with your shareholders, partners, whatever the case is, and you have reached this rough estimation, this best guess estimation of your monthly earnings. And in this case, these are the gross earnings. That means they include everything that is coming to you before deducting the financial responsibilities, wages, salaries, overheads, rentals, if there is any, and the manufacturing costs, the raw materials costs, and all of that. Before deducting these expenditures and these responsibilities, these are the gross earnings. Now, assuming the project duration is 10 months for project one, nine months for project two, four months for project three, the project duration here would consider the design phases all the way to the fully completion, testing and commissioning the project and the start of its functioning, of its operative timeline to get you the revenue. And next one, this guy here, the investment duration, also per month in this example. So this is the duration where your project will be producing this revenue, including the net profit for you 
and your partners if there are any. Usually, the projects and their investments period are timelines. They have this planned duration, this planned time. So in this example, I assumed, let's say 34 months are the time for the project from designing throughout planning, implementation, closing, and invest, including the investment. Some cases you're just renting a land lot, so you want to operate it, invest in it, and then return it back to its uh, original owners or uh, something like that. So in this case here, it is 34 months, as I said, including everything for project one, two, three. So in this cost benefit analysis, we're comparing these options, these choices of the same timeline. Now you would see that project three has an advantage in terms of the project duration. It's only four months. And after that, you start your investment period, but hold on till you see what's going on next. Now the total earnings, okay are just the monthly revenue that is coming to you multiplied by how many months your investment is running. So I will redo it again. You would simply multiply the earning per month by the investment duration, okay? And then you would do the, you do the same thing for project two, you would do the same thing for project three. Here we can see that project two has the best cost benefit ratio, which is in a way the purpose of this method and tool. It will guide us to know from costs perspective, from monetary perspective, which project we better go for. So this method and tool would support and be added to other tools, to other conclusions, to other studies to help inform better decisions, more efficient decisions by the, the project sponsor, the owner, the architect, the engineer, whatever the situation is to choose better choices after all. And here, remember the cost benefit ratio here is simply dividing the total earnings on the costs, the cost that made the project happen from design to zero to start until finish and closure, testing and commissioning. We could be adding another thing actually to this uh, tabulation here and other examples. So, more attractive maybe. Which is, you wanna know the net profit? The total net profit. That means after the deductions of all the other considerations that constitute the gross earnings. As I said, wages, salaries, overheads, rentals, raw materials, costs, operational costs, maintenance, bills. So no, uh, total net profit here would be deducting the total earning of the project minus the cost of the project. So let's do the argument in here. We can see, oh wait, before that, let me add another data. So the total net profit, and let's also get an idea about the monthly net profit of this project throughout the investment duration. So here, the total net profit, yeah, divided on 30 months and then get these guys here. So project one is giving us net profit, okay? 19,790, uh, while project two is, is generating 34,800. Project three is generating 14,000 plus. But project two is the best case scenario. Yes, we spent a lot on project two in this example, but project two turned out to be producing the best monthly income. Now take note here, it is not a rule. It is not always the case that if you pay more on a project, if you capitalize and fund a project more than other projects, that means this expensive project will return back to you more than others. No, in many cases, actually, 
a project that would cost you less could generate equally or more income and profits than a more expensive project. So let's talk project one and project three, okay? So in project one, you spent more money, right? You invested more money in project one than it is for project three. You see here, but the cost benefit ratio of project three is still better at 2.83, while the cost benefit ratio of project one is 2.64. That means choosing project three is more cost effective for you. Why? Look what's going on in here. Project three duration, implementation duration, like the, the project duration itself for project three is better than it. project one. It's shorter, it's only four months. So in some examples, the critical path of project three is shorter and you could be sequencing activities in parallel with each other's, for example, ordering in advance some equipment, some portions of the project scope you didn't have to plan or implement on site, rather you requested its fabrication, its preparation in advance. So you could save lots of time. Some operations and some activities of this project were going together in parallel. So project three was faster than project one. This is one, uh, this is one advantage that made the investment duration longer. Given, as I said, 34 is fixed, 34 months is fixed for all of them. So these monthly earnings for project three extended on a longer period of time than project one. Even though project one, in terms of value, the monthly earnings of project one are higher. I guess you get the point here, but still project three cost benefit ratio is better than project one, even though you spend less money on it. So this is the example of this method and tool, the cost benefit analysis for choosing a choice of investment, a project, a business stream, whatever the case is. Now, moving to the next example, and this example is focused on an activity, and in this context, in the construction project environment. Here, we have three options between choosing the type and the material of the walls. It is about choosing one of three choices of the type, the technique, and the materials of a wall. Let's say in a portion of a project, you want to save costs, you want to save time, you want to improve some aspect of the project. So the engineer or the architect suggested to change the type of the wall as it is in this context. So here you could deploy alternative analysis method and tool as well as cost benefit analysis method and tool. And by the way, as a reminder, I'm using now Google Sheets to build up these tools and in this case the cost benefit analysis and as I said before Google Sheets is very convenient very easy to use it's free you could do it just you could use it just through your Google account if you have a Gmail you can use it in other scenarios you could be using Excel software which I sometimes use as well and you can dig up this video to watch about these two tools to utilize them to build up your cost benefit tool, your cost benefit analysis tool, or your alternative analysis tool. So running quickly through this example, these prices, by the way, vary from area to area, from region to region, country to country, market to market, year to year. So they are not a definite uh, reference for you to know the prices, the unit price of each of these materials. Or labor work. Anyhow, in option one, we have the dry walls made from gypsum board techniques and materials. We have in option two, the red brick walls, and we have in option three, the CMU walls, the cement masonry units walls. You could be adding whatever columns, whatever options you want to study, analyze, and see their cost benefit ratios and which one would be best in your case for your project. Now, you can break down the costs per square meter or square foot, if you use that, and create like items or let's say a deliverable area to list down all those 
components of this activity or of this item. So, for example, materials supply for option one is this. These are costs by USD, for example. The materials supply, and then there is the accessories. There are accessories for each of these uh, techniques and types of walls. And there is the labor, okay, the wages, or the monthly salaries, if that is your basis. And then the logistics and handling to transfer the materials to their spot on the on site, in the construction site, to mobilize them from one area to another, vertically or horizontally, whatever your project is running on. Uh, actually, this is not a ratio. This is the total. So that would be how much with this wall, with this option, cost you per square meter in this example. By the way, the more skilled, the more experienced, and the more versatile of a background you have as an engineer or an architect, you could be filling these components and you could be breaking down these options further independently on yourself. But also you could be coordinating with other subcontractors, other individuals, other parties, other stakeholders of the project to collect all this data. And actually this is a better case scenario to integrate, to review the accuracy of this information with other parties, with other specialists. And in the end, these data will be checked by their relevant stakeholders or by your senior, whatever was going on in your project environment and structure. So you would be harvesting all these data and confirming them with their subject matter experts and as I said, with each stakeholder relevant to them. Okay, the plastering, second item, the plastering, for example, the drywalls don't require plastering, but the bricks and the CMU walls require plastering. So you can uh, tailor it and adjust it to the technical considerations and requirements of each option. And then the thermal insulation, option two, option three, do not require thermal insulation unless you're doing double walls, which is not the case in my example. And for as for option one, because drywalls, gypsum board have poor thermal properties. So usually the specifications imply as to use thermal boards or thermal insulation boards or rolls. Ah, remember, these tabulation that you would be doing should be in compliance with the project specifications from the contractual documents, ultimately from the project documents. So whatever the drawings, the blueprints, the specification documents, the BQ are directing the project team to implement and to, and to execute on site, these information, these data will reflect the main contractual project documents. All right, you would be seeing the painting. Of course, all these three options require painting, but in different efforts, in different materials, spending on them. And even the putty, in most cases, drywalls do not require putty, but uh, the other options require. Now here we've got the total of each option. Did I do it properly? Yeah, I did it properly. Okay, so we could see here that option one is ultimately less costly per square meter or per square foot than the other two options. This would guide us, inform us to select option one over option two and three. And this is from monetary and cost perspective, from financial perspective. Again, there will be other technical considerations to think of and to add to the cost benefit analysis. And usually you could be finding those other information. Which one should I be choosing? Should I be going for option one, two, three? You can find them in the alternative analysis method and tool, or probably in other kinds of tools, tabulations, project documents, again, depending on the project environment and your project documentation. And remember, after all, the contractual project documents, the drawings, blueprints, specifications, BQ, they reflect the grand purpose of the project, which is what the sponsor of the project, the senior management board or the owners would want out of this project from the start. And then the outcomes and the results 
of this cost benefit analysis in this example that option one is financially a better choice than the other two options because it's cheaper and it's a legit option that means it's one of the options acceptable to the client to the sponsor to whatever the stakeholders structure are in this project. Now you can insert these outcomes of this tool as inputs into another tool and let's say into the alternative analysis tool to help guide the decisions as one component out of other components and considerations. And let me show you where you can put them, where you can insert them. Okay, so this is an example for an alternative analysis tool. Uh, Please don't mind the technical information. They, again, they might be inaccurate or not very accurate. They could vary again from time to time, region to region, country to country, case to case. Anyhow, you see this row, the construction cost. Here, where you could insert the inputs of the cost benefit analysis, that, that tabulation that we just got aggregated and summed, could be putting them in here, in this baby, okay? So this is one, this is one way, I mean, this is one component out of other considerations of the alternative analysis. Uh, I think I'll be doing another video for the alternative analysis tool. I did one before, but I would be giving like a, another example about it. It's usually, by the way, qualitative tool. It's not a quantitative tool. It's a different topic. Anyhow, so after all, you will be getting a score. You would assume a scoring system for each of the, of the options and the results, the, the, the outcomes of this cost-benefit analysis would be one of the scoring system to choose which option you should be going for. All right, so we're back and I will wrap up this video. So reminding you, we've used the cost-benefit analysis to guide us to select investments, projects, choices, whatever we want to go for from costs perspective, monetary perspective. And then we have used this tool, this method and tool for an activity of a deliverable in a project. Stay tuned for more videos on methods, tools, and tactics on architecture and engineering from ADHD perspective. Subscribe and have a great day.